you know, people need to come to Africa with a different mindset. You know, it's, it's not a hopeless, helpless continent. It's full of the most dynamic. Whether you're entrepreneurs, philanthropists, business people, if you're not looking to Africa, you're not going anywhere. I know that you're up to some fantastic work right now, and I would love to hear, uh, hear more about it. So it's the only story I want to talk about. <laughs> it's, you know, it's the work that I've been doing in Africa since 2014, April 2014, when I made the crazy decision to respond to Tony Alumalu's challenge. Um, he's a, a businessman, an entrepreneur, an investor, a philanthropist um, from Nigeria. Um, based in Lagos, Nigeria. And he, our universe conspired for our paths to cross in London at the um, Dorchester Hotel. Um, and, you know, and he, I've done a lot of work in Africa and in, particularly in the media and entertainment industry. Anyway, when we met, he shared with me his vision, which was um, that African capitalism, that is the private sector that's going to transform Africa that what he wanted to do was to institutionalize luck and trans and democratize opportunity and that he saw African entrepreneurs as the lifeblood of the African continent and he was willing to commit a hundred million dollars of his own personal wealth which he had made as a result of his banking etc um, um, work to empowering 10,000 entrepreneurs over the next 10 years, starting in 2015. And he declared um, that the next decade would be the decade of African entrepreneurs. And I can tell you that he is absolutely right. That if all of you, whether you're entrepreneurs, philanthropists, business people, if you're not looking to Africa, you're not going anywhere. Africa is the future. It is the future, yeah? Um, so I did. I met him on the 10th of April, and uh, you know, and I said, "Wow, that sounds like an amazing challenge." That's like somebody saying to me, "I'm going to give you 100 million dollars, Parminda, go and make a blockbuster." And this is the biggest blockbuster that I have made. Yeah, I've made 50 plus films in my life, but this is the most. This is the most dynamic. This is the most impactful in terms of a story, and a story that is doesn't have an end, yeah? It's, it's had a beginning, ancient Africa, um, and you know, and the, the African entrepreneurs and the African private sector is waking up. It's literally, you remember how we used to say, what was it in, in Asia that is, that, you know, that is the tiger is, or was it the Asian tiger? You know, there were two That's animals that we were described by, right? But literally, um, across Africa, the private sector, is, is, is driving and will can drive the economic transformation of that continent. So I said, that's an amazing idea. I'm sure there are lots of people in Africa who can, you know, in, in terms of the foundation, who can run this extraordinary program. And he turned around to me and said, you know, would you come and help me operationalize that vision? So I remember I'm a film producer and I've made films and I produced films across the world in Africa, Asia, Latin America. And I've, and also raised on film funds to invest in, in films. Um, and I, it was just literally a five second pause. And I thought, yeah, I could do this. And I said, well, let me just go and talk to my husband and my children and see if they're, and, uh, you know, if they'd be prepared for me to move to Lagos. And that was the challenge that I had to move to Lagos. And within 10 days, I was in Lagos at my desk, <laughs> starting to structure, operationalize that vision. So how do you reach 10,000 entrepreneurs over the next 10 years, 1,000 across 54 African countries, three colonial languages, um, and, and get them to, to, uh, you know, to, to buy into this entrepreneurship program? So you know, over nine months, and it was literally like birthing a baby and, and giving birth to that baby on the 1st of December, which is when we publicly launched it. We, I looked at all the entrepreneurship prog programs under the sun. Clearly, I missed Unreasonable because they had <laughs> already been there in 2010. Um, and, lit, you know, and, and, and set about designing a program which would be holistic. Um, that Africa, the Af there is no entrepreneurial class in Africa. You know, the colonizers, the, the, those who deliver independence, have really decimated the entrepreneurial class. Yeah? 
um, you know, it's become um, a continent where so much stuff is dumped onto the continent. Yeah, imagine Uganda, which has four million plus cows. It had was the far biggest cotton producer on the continent, importing secondhand shoots and importing secondhand clothes. Yeah, the secondhand Japanese cars across in Uganda clogging up the streets. Yeah, that the supply chains of every sector that you think about is gone. Yeah, um, so and yet. You know, when we uh, when we announced this program on the twin, on the first of we opened the portal on the first of um, January 2015, 20,000 entrepreneurs from 51 countries applied, minus Eritrea, South Sudan, I think. 2018, 151,692 came to the portal and made the application. So we have over 300,000 entrepreneurs who've expressed, who've said yes they've gone through the application form, that I have a business idea that can transform Africa, yeah? And in those four years, we've um, supported through training, through mentoring, and we have mentors from around the world. And in fact, as I landed in Hong Kong, I hadn't realized Jean-Luc was, uh, was a mentor, and he had reached out to me, and I said I was going to be in Hong Kong. We met, and in fact, he's been a mentor for the last three years on the program, and he lives in Hong Kong, yeah? I, you know, so recruiting and finding the mentors from literally India, Africa, Asia, Latin America, around the world to say, come and be a, a mentor. And then um, providing a tiny bit of seed capital to the entrepreneur. And then make, giving them a, a membership, becoming, a, you know, part of a network, taking away this thing that the, you know, the, the elephant in the room is the isolated entrepreneur in the same way as you know, what um, Unreasonable is doing is building a community. We now have 4,250 entrepreneurs who are networked across 54 African countries. The best ways that entrepreneurs learn is from each other. Yeah? And every year at the end of their 12-month program, we bring them together for three days in Lagos where they have been able to build online relationships yeah, with, them, with each other, with their um, um, mentors um, across, you know, across countries, but also within their own countries. And this is for three days. They're able to now, like we are, they're able to meet each other. Yeah. So a drone entrepreneur from Sierra Leone, who you know, remember when the mudslide happened? Um, his he suddenly took his commercial application of what he was using drone technology for. One of our entrepreneurs from 2015 and use it for with UN operations to support them with their, um, you know, in terms of mapping where, you know, where were the most dangerous areas in mudslide. Another, again, I'll use another example of a drone entrepreneur who's taken technology to the farms, to the farmers, yeah. And one, he it shares a story with me of how he went to a farm. He's now going around and trying to get farmers to buy into his drone technology. Of course, they don't get it because it's like, what the hell is this machine? Anyway, he got a meeting with the, the you know, the farmers who had gathered. And they said, okay, young man, you know, we've had our meeting, now come outside and meet. He said, now tell us, what is it that you've come to? Um, what have you brought to us in the village? He said, why don't we all step outside? And they stepped outside and he gave them the drone controls and they were trying to make it move. And, and he's telling them how it's going to help them with their crop spraying and the fertilizer and mapping their lap. God, this is pouring on the drink. Um, and then he got a tap on his shoulder and the old man said, you know what, this is what's going to bring my son back to the farm. And those, you know, another woman, you know, applied and she had, she was an engineer, a mechanical engineer. And she said she was going to set up a, a motor mechanics workshop for women, as you know and I know. When you open the bonnet, you know what that, you do not know what the hell is going on. I don't I know. Mean, I'm sure that was good. And she took the training mentoring and the five thousand dollars in capital, dug two pits, began training other women with mechanics, and now has the largest motor mechanics workshop for women. Women customers as well as well as women mechanics in Lagos and has the Uber account and has so the point I'm making is that tiny, that structured approach, that structured intervention that Tony Illumilu 
um, has made with by committing, you know, that he wants to be known for the legacy that he, he leaves behind rather than the size of his bank account, has really empowered and is empowering entrepreneurs. Imagine what if all of you began to now see Africa as a as an investment destination and not as an aid. Africans do not need aid. What they need is investment. Yeah? Africans don't need for you to bring your extraordinary solutions without the supply chain. Yeah? Um, so I what was it? I, what, who was that? Who is he going? You know, talking with Echo Echo Frost. Yeah. My first question is, how can we manufacture those um, cold storages in Africa so that you're keeping the supply chain in Africa? Yeah? There's no supply chain that's been retained in Africa. And where do entrepreneurs thrive the most is in that supply chain. Yeah? Um, one of the things that really struck us when we started the, up, the, the, the program um, we said we're sector agnostic, so there was an assumption that it would be a, you know, it would become tech because everybody is saying that Africa is leapfrogging technology. But what emerged that young Africa, and I'm talking about 21 to 37 year olds, so the median age across Africa, the continent is 19 to 21. Okay? So you know where the next labor force is coming from. You know where the next innovation is coming from. Yeah, you know where the next solutions to Africa world's biggest problems are coming from, they're going to come from Africa and young African entrepreneurs. I'd like to think that when I come here next year, if I'm invited still, I'd see a lot more African entrepreneurs yeah, who are also who's bringing some local solutions, but are also global solutions. But agriculture emerged as the largest sector. 30% of our entrepreneurs every year are in the agri businesses from farm to fork. Um, women was the other one. People said, you, I mean, people first said, this is audacious, this is crazy, you'll never do it. Yeah? And thousand entrepreneurs, 54 companies. What's enabled us is obviously technology. We have a technology application form, technology mental learning platform, and a technology hub where the graduates meet. But the, the gender one was, well, I said I was never going to, we were never going to create a separate window for African women entrepreneurs like they are. You know, that they have different challenges. They do, of course. But in the first year, we had like the 24% of the businesses, um, women, uh, women may apply to the program, and we selected 24%. Second year, 34% applied. That's because we use women as the role models to say, look, this is what a, an African woman entrepreneur looks like on the Tony Lumi Foundation Entrepreneurship Program. You too can apply. That increased to 34%. The third year is 39%. This year is 41%. I believe by the fifth year we will be 45%. Yeah. Um, in that, all of that. So yes, we are empowering the entrepreneurs, but we also recognize that we need to change the enabling environment. You guys, I mean, I, you know, entrepreneur in the UK, in UK, US, and even India to some extent. We don't know how lucky we are in terms of the enabling environment, the entrepreneurial ecosystem that's there to support and sustain you. Um, I think if you try to be an entrepreneur in any of the 54 African countries, particularly in the fragile economies, like I've been to Central Africa Republic, um, to, the Dominic, um, to Congo, and, and to all of those countries, try being an entrepreneur in those countries. Yeah? Um, so it's really critical that we you know, um, to use the data that we have, use the bottom-up approach that we've taken, use the analysis um, that we, and the insights that we get from that data analysis, because these are real entrepreneurs, yeah? And really develop policies that are from the bottom-up and get government and policymakers um, internally to begin to implement them, yeah? I mean, you know, in some countries it takes six to 12 months to register a company. In other countries like Rwanda, you can do it in two hours. Yeah? But, you know, we have to create a level playing field. SME finance, banks, you know, will totally, 30% interest rate to, if you want to loan. Yeah? I mean, that is like, you might as well lie, you know, tie lead balloons 
you know, around the entrepreneur's ankles and sort of walk up the Himalayas. That's how tough it is, you know. Um, power, the internet, etc. And yet, you know, the extraordinary 4,250 entrepreneurial stories making real impact in there. For us, is really that we're making an impact on your family first, you and your family, that you're able to put food on the table. You're making an impact on your community, yeah, and then your country, and then your region, and then your continent, etc. Um, I think finally, what's really magical about what Tony Anumalu and his vision, um, what he's doing, and I've had, it is an honor and a privilege, you know, for a five foot Indian woman who made movies to be, you know, that he had the confidence that he in, trusted me with that, like, you know, come and I'll help operationalize this vision. I think the impact of, this pro, of his intervention is going to have, is, is already having an extraordinary impact and that you will be, you will see it. So when I've talked to a number of the entrepreneurs here who are looking to, for market entry into the, into Africa, um, what's beautiful is to be able to say to them, yes, of course, you know, um, Eco Force, yeah, I can put you in touch with entrepreneurs who are already looking at cold storage and looking at how do you, so many entrepreneurs, you know, in tomato, cassava, yam, all the, the grains, etc. you know, that one can actually make that connection with real entrepreneurs and not politicians or, yeah. Um, similarly with Manoj, you know, the, the, you know, the business that, yeah, that you have. I know, you know, a lot of our entrepreneurs are in, 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 in the energy sector. One kid, he applied when he was 18 years old and he's now 20 and made it to, is amongst the six entrepreneurs from the entrepreneurship program who's on the Forbes under 30 years. And so that is like, we're not, you know, it's not millions of dollars that we're in, you know, investing. Is that someone has said, yes, I believe in your idea. And then finally, it's literally, you know, if you've ever tried to work in Africa and travel across intra-Africa trade, intra-Africa travel, intra-Africa communication is a nightmare. And yet, with this program, we have connected, entrepreneurs have helped to connect Africa as a continent um, and, 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 and open markets for each other, for the entrepreneurs across, the, across those 54 countries. And one final thing, I guess, is really, and um, the time is gone, but I'm really, this is my last bit, is that, you know, as people are coming, you know, people need to come to Africa with a different mindset. You know, it's, it's not a hopeless, helpless continent. It's full of the most dynamic. Have you met a Nigerian entrepreneur? I mean, they will leave you totally floor. yeah? Um, so, a lot of the DFIs, the development finance institutions, a lot of um, governments, a lot of at the multilateral donor agencies from the World Bank, IFC, we're saying to them, you have to come with a different mindset. You have to come with a view to investing. And they are beginning to see entrepreneurship as a development tool, um, and, but that they have to do it from the bottom up and not you know, bring um, top-down solutions. And the, the Red Cross got in touch with us and said, we want to see if we can take entrepreneurship into the post-conflict areas in the northeastern region of, of Nigeria. And we said, fine, we have a platform that works. You have to provide the seed capital. So they committed a million dollars, which has enabled us to take an additional 200 entrepreneurs in that particular region. So we've adapted our online program for offline. Yeah? And a lot of those entrepreneurs, I mean, they're just going through the 12-week program right now. UNDP did exactly the same and said we want to, to focus on the fragile economies. And I've just come back from Central Africa Republic. It's an extraordinary country with extraordinary resources, extraordinary entrepreneurs. Um, and we said yes, we will take and we'll be taken on 40 this year, the next year we'll take on an additional 200. Yeah? Um, so what we're looking for is really like here's a platform if you want to come and invest in any of these, support any of these entrepreneurs, or you know, we have a commitment to taking a thousand every year, 
and we welcome organizations, institutions that are saying, you know what, we'll sponsor another 200, 300. Um, because Africa doesn't have, there's not time. It needs to develop. It needs, the entrepreneurs need to develop very, very fast. And we, in the outside world, need to go and invest in them and make them our business partners. So sorry. Thank you so much. That's all I understand.